All right, so at this point, you understand what a derivative is, right? So if we have a function like f of x, the derivative tells us about the rates of change of the original function. But as you've seen so far and done yourself, it's really tiresome to take derivatives with the limit definition. The good news is, as you'll see here in the near future, we have many different tricks, many different rules for actually applying derivatives to different types of functions. In this video, we're going to focus on polynomials and the function f of x equals e of x. All right, let's get right to the rules. Our first rule is for the derivative of a constant. If you think about a constant, a constant function is a function that outputs the same thing no matter what the input. So it should make sense that the derivative of a constant function is zero because there's no rate of change. Our second rule, the power rule, is by far the most useful rule you'll use in all of calculus. This is how do you differentiate x to n. In this case, we're saying n is any real number. I'm not going to prove this here, but you can see this proof in textbooks and videos online. But the derivative of x to the n power equals n times x to the n minus 1. These next three laws are exactly the same as the limit laws. First is, how do you take the derivative of something with a constant out front, or how do you deal with constants? The answer will be, well, you can actually move the constant out front and then differentiate the function on the inside. And then we have the sum and different rules, and these simply state that if you're differentiating two separate functions that are being added or subtracted, you can differentiate both of those separately. All right, so there you have it. Those are our five first basic rules for differentiation. Just to go back through this real fast, the derivative of any constant is zero. The power rule tells us that the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus one. How you think of this, by the way, is that you bring down this value, whatever this exponent is, you put it out front as a multiple, and then you subtract one from that exponent. Three is the constant multiple rule. What this simply means is if you're taking the derivative of something gnarly, you can move any constant factors, non-variable factors, out front of the derivative and then differentiate the, the stuff with the variables. The sum and difference rule say when you have a complicated thing, let's say like a polynomial with multiple terms, you can attack each term individually. In our first example here, you're going to see how much easier this makes your life, especially when dealing with polynomials. Here we're given f of x equals 3x cubed minus 5x squared plus x plus 1. We're being asked to find the first and second derivatives. Now again, what I can do if I want to differentiate f of x, very first, the sum and difference rules say that I can attack each of these terms separately. I don't have to differentiate the whole function all at once. The constant multiple rule says that when I differentiate one of these terms, the constant doesn't affect anything. I can actually just go in and differentiate the variable part. And then the power rule says that when I differentiate the variable parts of this polynomial, I bring that power of the exponent down as a constant out front, and I take one away from the exponent. Finally, if we ever run into a term that's a constant, the derivative of that will just be zero. So now we're going to take this derivative. Just so you know, I'm not going to show every little step here. What I want to show you is actually how you will use these rules all together moving forward. Again, I can attack each term separately, so let's attack 3x cubed. When I look at 3x cubed, the constant multiple rule says that 3 out front doesn't do anything. I can ignore that. It's going to be multiplied by the derivative of what our x cubed is. The derivative of x cubed means I can bring the 3 down and multiply it out front and take one away. When I bring that 3 down and multiply it out front, I'm multiplying it by that 3. So the derivative of this term right here would end up being 9x squared. So I multiply that 3 by that 3, and I take away 1 from that exponent. Moving on to the next term, I'm doing exactly the same thing. The 2 comes down and multiplies by the 5 there to give me a 10. x now to the 1 power. Now plus x, x to the 1, I bring the 1 down and take 1 away. When you take a power of 1 away from x, it gets x to the 0, which is the same thing as 1. But this is an easy kind of to remember, is that the derivative of any linear term that doesn't have an exponent, right, or has an exponent of 1, it's just the coefficient out front. In this case, that's just 1. Finally, the last term, the derivative of 1, we use the derivative of constant. It would be 0. I, I could write a plus 0, but I'm not going to. 
Following the same logic, I'm now going to differentiate the first derivative to find the second derivative. When I differentiate this, I'm going to bring that exponent down. This becomes 18x to the 1 power, negative 10x. This was like what I was talking about with this right here. When I differentiate any term that's linear, because I'm going to bring down a 1 and make that a 0, this just leaves me with a coefficient of negative 10. So there we have it for this first polynomial. Again, these rules make finding the derivatives of polynomials incredibly easy. We no longer need the, def the limit definition of a derivative. We now can apply these rules anytime we're being asked to differentiate. In our second example here, we're being asked to differentiate this rational function. What you might be thinking at this point is maybe what we can do, if you're following the trend of the rules here, Maybe we're allowed to, to differentiate the numerator and denominator and then just take the quotient of those derivatives. Actually, we can't. And you'll see when we talk about the product and the quotient rules, it's slightly more complicated. But we can make this an equation that we can differentiate in using this set of rules. The first thing I'm going to do is has nothing to do with differentiation. It's simply algebra. I'm going to distribute or apply this division of x squared to each of these terms. When I do that, what I'll get from this, so x squared divided by x squared is a 1. Negative 3x divided by x squared. When I divide by this x squared, right, I'm subtracting 2 from this exponent here. What I'll be left with is 3x to the negative 1. And then when I take 1 and divide it by x squared, I could write that as x to the negative 2. You could think of that as 1 over x squared, right? But 1 over x squared can be written with negative exponents in this manner. Now if we want to differentiate this equation, we can differentiate this with the power rule just like we did with the polynomials. Even though this is a rational equation, we can treat it like a polynomial with this rule. When I apply the derivative then to each of these terms, the derivative of 1 is 0. That's simply a constant. The derivative of this term right here, so what I do is I bring down the negative 1 and multiply it by the 3. That gives me a positive 3. Then I get x to the negative 1 minus 1 is actually negative 2. I do the same thing with this last term. I bring down the negative 2. I take 1 away to get x to the negative 3. If I wanted to, I could then clean this up. This is the derivative, but if I wanted to rewrite it without negative exponents, which is often something we want to do, I would write this as 3 over x squared minus 2 over x to the third. You could even go so far as multiplying this in the numerator and denominator by x cubed to combine these together if you want. We'll just show that real fast. So if I multiply each term here by x, what I'll get is 3x minus 2 all over x cubed. All right, in our third example here, we have something kind of similar that we just had. We have the multiplication of two things we could consider functions, the x, the cube root of x, excuse me, and the x minus 1. What we might be tempted to do again at this point is to differentiate each of these separately and then to multiply those together. But we don't have a product rule that says that. And in fact, as you'll see soon, the product rule is a bit more complicated. But what we can do is do some algebra, and then we can again use these rules that we have right here. First and foremost, you need to remember that the cube root of x is the same thing as x to the 1 third. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this x to the 1 third to each of these terms. When I multiply the x to the 1 third times the x, and remember this is an x to the 1 power, and I'm, when I multiply these together, I add their exponents together, this will give me x to the 4 thirds minus x to the 1 third. Now I'm able to differentiate using these sets of rules right here. So h prime of x would be 4 thirds. Again, I'm bringing that exponent down and multiplying it out front. x to the 1 third. So when I subtract 1 away from 4 thirds, I get 1 third. And then here I have x to the 1 third. I bring down the 1 third. I subtract 1 away from that to get to the negative 2 thirds. As before, there is a lot more that I could do with this if I want. I probably won't do it all right now, but just to show you, I could rewrite this as 4 to the times cube root of x over 3 is one way that I could clean up that term. And then minus here, that negative exponent's going to bring that down. What I would get is 1 over 3 times the cube root of x squared is the way that I could rewrite that rational exponent.
And I won't here, but what you could do at this point is deal with this radical in the denominator here by rationalizing the exponents or by combining these fractional terms together. But the point I wanted to make with this video, again, is that when you have an expression like this, you can't just multiply the derivatives of each of these. You need to get to a point where you can apply one of these five rules. Here I distributed, I rewrote this as a rational exponent and then applied the power rule to each of those terms separately. If you've dealt much with exponentials and logarithms, you probably have seen the number e. e is a mathematical transcendental number. Here's the definition of e, by the way. Before this, you might not have known that the definition is based on a limit here. e is really important, and you might notice this expression right here is very similar to, to um, things like compound interest. e has a very important role in exponential, exponential behavior. And while we're introducing the first of the basics of the rules of derivatives, we might as well introduce E here because the exponential base E acts very strangely when you take the derivative. The fact is that when you differentiate E to the X, you get E to the X. E to the X is the only function that when you differentiate, it doesn't affect it. You output the exactly the same function. What that means right there is that when you look at the graph of e to the x here, you look at any point, at any point, the output value, in this case, at one, the output value is e, or, or this 2.718, yada, yada. That y value is exactly the same as the slope of the tangent line at that point. At any point on e to the x, the y value is telling you the slope of the tangent. And if that's not cool, I honestly don't know what we can do to excite you.